So this is how to do a chi-squared test when you've got a two by two table. So this is the data from the question about fingernails and gender. This is actually last year's data, so it's not you in particular. So what we have, I asked about how do you look at your nails? Which one of the two photos do you agree with? Do you look at them flat and extended or do you look at them folded over? I then asked about your gender. I've simplified this here down to two genders uh, because if I have three genders, uh, there's a problem with a chi-squared test. And also I want to demonstrate a two by two test. There's also questions about plagiarism, chi-squared test, uh, SPSS and audio feedback and how long you're supposed to be spending on doing this course. Anyway, so I want to do a chi-square test to look at how you look at your nails and if gender has an influence on this. So the first thing you have to think about when doing any chi-square test is what is your hypothesis? So the hypothesis is that gender affects the way you look at your fingernails. If I look at my fingernails flat or folded over, depending on which one I do, cannot change my gender. My gender is fixed. That's the thing that is affecting the way that I look at my fingernail. That's the, the question and the hypothesis. So therefore the outcome variable is how I look at my fingernails and the explanatory variable is gender or using the terms dependent and independent, which I don't really like is. Dependent is how you look at your fingernails. Independent is the gender. Right. So to do this, you'll notice that in this data set, I have a line, a row, for each one of the 140 individuals in this particular set. Often you get this data summarized in a table, a contingency table or a cross table. You don't want it like that. You want the raw data where you've got a row for each individual that you collected data on. Then you can create that summary table by going to analyze, descriptive statistics, cross tabulations. So this is going to sum things up across two different categorical variables. So I've got how do you check your fingernails and gender. Now, which one do I want in rows and which one do I want in columns? For the two by two case and in the case of the chi square test, you can get it the wrong way around. It doesn't matter. You end up with exactly the same numbers. But by convention, it is more intelligent to have the explanatory variable. So in this case, gender represent the rows. And the outcome variable, so your dependent variable, be the columns. If you switch this round, it's not catastrophic, unlike in regression analysis, where if you mix the X and Y axis around, your gradient is completely wrong and your intercept. Uh, once you've selected your variables, then you go to the statistics thing and you can click on the statistics you want it to calculate for that chi-squared test. Now you can also, you can calculate chi-squared. There are other things that you can calculate. So in this case, how you look at, uh, looking at your nails folded over or looking at them, your nails flat, these are independent events. One does not influence the other. You either take one choice or the other. Now, if you were doing this test and instead of having gender, you had two individuals who were doing uh, a grading of tumor samples. So they've got tumor slides from, let's say, cervical cancer. They're, they're grading how severe uh, the tumor is or how severe the cancer grading is. So they've got grades and let's uh, say one, two, three. And you've got individual one and individual two who are doing the grading. And what you want to do is see, do they grade equally between the two of them? Now, in that case, because they're all using the same slides, how you grade it is not completely independent because you've got the same sample being used by both of them. 
So in that case, the chi-squared test is not really valid because they're no longer independent of each other and you should use the McNamara's test. In this case, it's, they are independent, so you can use chi-squared, so you press continue. Now, as I said, your hypothesis is that there's an association between gender and the way you look at your fingernails. So the null hypothesis is there is no effect. So that means there's an equally likely probability that you look at your fingers either extended or folded over if you're male and female. There's no difference in the proportions of people looking at their fingernails in the two different way, it's dependent on gender. They are equally distributed. The alternative hypothesis is that there is some difference in the distribution. So we can press OK and it gives First, case processing summary telling you it's processed all 140. There are no missing values. Next, it gives you the cross tabulation, which is exactly what you want. There are three men that look at it flat, 32 folded, uh, 39 women look at it flat, 66 look at it folded. In total, there are 35 men, there are 150, 105 women, 42 uh, looked at it flat, 98 look at it folded. Now, I'm just having a think about this. So I, I'm going to click on something which is called the expected count. Press continue and press OK. So this will give me a slightly more complicated version of the table that I just did. So here's the first table, which is a contingency table, and it's worked it out. Um, so I want to show you the process of what the chi-squared test is doing. So what I can do is I can work out the probability of being male, which is 35 out of 140. The probability of being female is 105 out of 140. Now, these probabilities occur in the margins, so they're called marginal probabilities. I can also work out the probability of putting my fingers out flat, which is 42 out of 140, and a folded is 98 out of 140. Now, if I multiply the probability of being male, which is 35 out of 140, by the probability of holding the fingers flat, which is 42 out of 140, that will give me the probability of being male and holding my hands flat. I can then multiply that by 140 to calculate the expected number of men that will hold their fingers flat. So that's what's happened in this second table. So it says the expected number you want to see here is 10.5, expected number you want to see here is 24.5, expected number here is 31.5, and the expected number you want to see here is 73.5. Those are your expected values. Now, the chi-squared test is a simple test. It just looks at the difference between what actually happens and what you expected to happen. Now, sometimes you're going to get a negative number. So 3 minus 10.5, negative. But sometimes you get a positive number. In fact, you have to have positive and negative numbers because one category will be short where it's the expected of the expected number and some one category will be more than the expected number. So in this case, this one's negative, this one 32 minus 24.5 will be positive. So observed minus the expected ends up always uh, being alternate positive and negative signs. So to get rid of signs, you can square things. So that's why it's called chi-squared because you square these numbers. So you do observed minus expected squared divided by uh, expected. This gives you a number. You do this for each one of the cells, add up those numbers, that's your chi-squared statistic. Now, that's all fine, except when you've got a two by two table like this, so two rows and two columns, you work out what's called degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom you've come across in t-tests and in the case of uh, chi-squared tests, it's the number of rows minus one multiplied by the number of columns minus one. Now, both the number of rows and columns is two and two minus one is one. So one times one is one. It's got one degree of freedom. 
Now, if you remember anything about the t-test and the so the t-test statistic for doing the confidence interval with one degree of freedom, it's very wide. When you have one degree of freedom, the only thing you need to understand about degrees of freedom is when it's low, you've got a lot of problems with what we call bias. You're likely to be overly optimistic about what's going on in the world. So therefore, you need to do what's called a correction. And for the chi-squared test, you do what's called Yates continuity correction. So for Yates continuity correction, you get the observed minus the expected, as you did before. But you don't square those two things. You just ignore the sign about them. So you just take the modulus and ignore the sign. Do the difference between the two. Then you subtract 0.5 from that difference. Then you square it and do exactly the same as you did before. So this removes any kind of bias and it reduces the size of the sum of all those differences. So they become all these numbers become slightly smaller. So the probability of if the probability of seeing a very large difference between these numbers is very low. If these two numbers are very similar to each other, observed and expected, then that's very common and you would agree with maintain the null hypothesis. So what you're looking for is big discrepancies all adding up together to give you a very big Pearson's chi-squared difference. So here's the Pearson's chi-squared, that's the test statistic. Here's the probability of it occurring, 0.01. Here is the continuity corrected version, which is 8.889. And here is the p-value of it, which is slightly larger than 0.003. So this is <coughs> Yates continuity corrected for a two by two table. Whenever you see a two by two table, you should use that value. Now there's one other thing that you have to take into account, which is the other little warning here with the A symbol. So it says zero cells have expected count less than five. Now the requirement is that your expected counts in each one of the cells must be bigger than five. Now in this case, because it's a two by two table and you've got a reasonably large number of people, 140, it's very unlikely that you're going to predict any of these cells to be less than five. But if I had instead of uh, two genders, I had three, and one of the genders is uh, so non-binary, it's not only represented by one or two people, then the probability of being uh, non-binary is low. So it's only, let's say two out of 140. And the probability of having flat or folded fingers is going to be very low as well within those, that particular category. The actual observations will be low and the probability of being expected to be in those two categories is low. So when you have cells where the expected count is too low, you can't use this test. The reason being that your real count minus your expected ends up being a very arbitrarily large number. So this inflates your Pearson's chi-squared statistic and pushes down your p-value. The general rule of thumb is, if you, so you can have tables which are very large and have many, many, many cells, you must have less than 20% of your cells with a count less than five. Some statisticians take an even more strict requirement that you should have no cells with less than five expected counts. Now, if by some chance you ever do happen to have a two by two uh, table where you do have one of those four cells being predicted to having less than five, you can use something which is called the Fisher's exact test. So that will calculate a p-value for a very special test, which allows you to ignore that assumption. The test is incredibly special. It is created specifically for each set of data. That's why it's called an exact test. So it depends on the data structure itself. Uh, in this case, because the chi-squareds and the continuity, Yates continuity corrected ones are both significant, it's not a big, uh, difference between those and the exact test. 
Another thing that's here is the likelihood ratio. This is a more modern test than either continuity corrected or uh, chi-squared. It is somewhat difficult to explain because I'd have to go into uh, an area of probability that I've not covered. Um, some people like to quote these. If you're, if you see the literature in the area where you're doing that particular uh, chi-squared test has got examples of likelihood ratios, then maybe you want to put the likelihood ratio instead. This is its test statistic value. Here's its, its p-value. Right, I think that's finished.